Welcome to Simon Says Farms. And in this video, we're gonna talk about fencing and we're gonna try to do it while actually fixing part of the fence in the paddock with all these guys. You guys ready to help me fix the fence? Especially you, Billy, and you, Danica, old queen boss here. Look at them all, they're just following me. So we got a couple broken sections on our fence. You can see this one right here snapped and fell down. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 hello, hello. This is not working. Hello, guys, come on, come on. I gotta get in here to fix the fence. Jeez, I'm taking away all my credibility. Nobody's gonna take me seriously. Because you, you serious? Did you really just do that? You flip, you flip the camera around. Charlotte, Charlotte flipped the camera around. So what we're gonna do is just fix this one real quick. Try to. Oh, but let me fix this one and then we'll get back to you guys in a second. On. Don't bite me. Get off my ear. They're not even scared of the drill. So if you notice, you have to fix the fence from the inside. That was done by design. So in our case, we used the three lateral approach on all our fencing. You see it all around the barn. We have three lateral. Those are one by, they're, they're, uh, they're one by three quarter inch by five by eight. It's decking board is what it is. See, it's got the rounded edge on it. You know, some of them we actually changed somewhere and didn't buy the rounded edge. It was a little cheaper, but it's just like five inches by eight feet by about three quarter inch, three of those and a four by four post, eight foot four by four post. So it goes into the ground. This is about five feet tall. So it goes into the ground, say three, four feet, something like that, three feet. We dig a hole. We don't use post hole diggers here in Connecticut. Way too many rocks for post hole diggers. Got another one I'm gonna try to fix right here, another one snapped off. Over time, these fences are old. You gotta come around and check them out every once in a while. Bring it up. There we go, that's not going anywhere. So yeah, we don't use the post hole digger, we use the backhoe. You could use the post hole digger if you don't have as many rocks as we do. dig the hole out, drop the four by four in it, level it out, and then just go eight feet over and dig another hole. So you're basically never cutting these. You're just moving along. I Who cares if it's eight feet like and an inch or eight feet and a half an inch? Let's fix this one right here. So we put, you're gonna wanna put and we'll talk about this again in a second. Hang on. Ooh, I think I think I hear I think I hear thunder. And not and not the goat thunder. The storm thunder. Like rain. So I hit this with the lawnmower earlier today. That's what messed this all up. Charlotte! Okay. All right, I've got to pick up all my screws that I dropped on the ground. All right, here we go. So, as you can see, I 
we purposely put, I gotta find some for the drill. We purposely put the four by four post and the lateral on the inside. That way when the goats push on it, right? Push, push, push to try to get the grass on the outside. Yes, that's the part of the pillar still not done for those of you regular villagers. Thanks for watching. Still not done. Wood on the inside, pillar there. That way when they push, they're actually pushing the screws in and not popping them out. So rookie mistake, don't put them on the outside. Now, when you get to the corner, you have no choice. When you get to the corner, you have to run the corner one, right, around the outside. So that's it. For the corner one, for the corner one right here, go ahead, run around the outside and then back to the inside, inside, outside over there, and then inside, 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 all the way down. So the next thing we did after the posts are in, now that fencing could work for say a cow or maybe a horse. I don't know, I don't own horses, so I'm not really sure. But for goats, you need to add the metal because they'll find their way through it. So we get the red top line metal, not sponsored tractor supply. I have never found anybody else to carry it. It's got that red line on the top, right? Squares are pretty big. And at the bottom, the squares are smaller. So they gradually get bigger and it's about a five foot length. And it comes in like a 250 foot roll, which is nice because you don't have to buy a lot of rolls. Actually, no, wait a second. Let me check. I think it comes a lot longer than that. So we're talking fencing, goat fencing. I've always had to make this video. Sorry, her face, beautiful. Um, I found her and it comes in 330 foot rolls. The metal fencing we use on our white fencing comes in a 330 foot roll. That's what I was trying to explain. So we talked about already four by fours, backhoe or post hole digger. We talked about put the wood on the inside of the four by four, not on the outside. We talked about if you have goats, you're gonna have to do metal, the three pieces of wood and the vertical is not gonna be enough. They will jump right through that. So you need the metal. Um, the other thing we were gonna mention was you don't have to build it this way. You could do the green T post and mm -hmm. hog panels, mm -hmm. which is what I'm gonna show you next. But I had to stop here because this cutie was sitting here at her greenhouse and she's a greenhouse gardener. Look at all that, yep. Video coming soon. <laughs> I'm glad I could help so much. Thanks. Any comments on fencing? Consider I don't know what y'all talked about. Well, what's important in fencing? Constantly maintenance. Structural integrity. Yeah. Get down as far as you can with those four by fours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even if you use the green T posts, they gotta be down pretty far. Yeah. Because the goats are going to use them as scratching posts, like you're fencing a scratching post, so yep. you don't want them moving over time. Getting right. below the frost line is important too in New England, or anywhere that right. freezes. Right. Right. Well, that'll just make your, if you don't get below the frost line, it'll it'll cause your fence to just not be at, oh, well, it, it, fan it, kicked on. Oh my god, squirrel moment. <laughs> now it's off. <laughs> squirrel, you were going to say? I don't know. No frost the line. Came by. Because of the frost line in Connecticut, it's technically four feet. We're not getting down that low. But we haven't seen a frost in Connecticut more than like two feet in a long time. So well, our fence. That's the good old days of New England yeah. when it actually got cold. Right. It doesn't get cold anymore. Nope. So the next fence I'm going to show you is the green T post hog panel style fence. And if you watch our channel at all, you saw that in Gus's pen, which I'll link up here somewhere if I remember to link it up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay, she left me. I mean, she didn't leave me. She went to go get a snack or something. So we're gonna go check and show you the other fence. So while we're at it, duck fencing, totally different. Same concept, four by four. Instead, I used the two by four, top, bottom, and all the way at the ground, ducks. Oh, it's time to change their water. Did you know that ducks use their pond as their litter box. If you give them water, they will pretty much only poop in there and they won't poop on the ground. So they're getting a bigger pond. Stay tuned, subscribe and follow, bigger pond coming. So we use a four by two fencing. Now the weird part about this is because it's such a tall structure, it's eight feet. We have to buy a five footer and a three footer 
yeah, no, I'm wrong. A five and a four, which makes nine feet and it kicks one foot out the bottom like that, right? It goes underground and comes out a little and it makes it so nobody can dig and get their way into the chickens. How you doing chickens? Watch out for chicken, chicken eater right here. She's watching chicken TV. Okay, back to what we left off. I'm gonna leave the drill here. We don't need that. We're gonna walk past the pigs and go check on boy goats because that's where we use different style fencing. We will start here with Gus's new pen, Gus's new digs, right? So hog panels, 16 feet in length, local uh, farm su uh, tractor supply. Um, again, not sponsored, someday maybe. So 16 feet, they go way down, it goes from here, right? All the way down to here, right? So we do three stakes pretty much on each panel the green stake gets pushed into the ground as far as you can get it in pretty much to the top this is this if i could have gotten this down a little farther i would but again fence on the inside stake on the outside now we actually did something wrong here i don't know if anybody's pointed it out yet we actually put the stakes in backwards so see these little knobs on the stakes somebody i thought somebody was talking to me see these knobs on the stakes they're facing the wrong way they should have been turned around so those knobs were up against the metal here so the goat can't lift the metal up right now my strap here the metal strap we use to tie it in which those metal pieces you can get them with the fence we just use a pair of pliers and tie them all up right here tie them all up three on each one and you're good so let me turn the camera around again all the way around, hog panel, all the way around, green stakes, one every three panels. So measure your pen, divide that measurement by 16, that'll tell you how many panels you need, and then multiply that number by three, and that'll tell you how many green stakes you're gonna need. You obviously need to build a little hut, very simple for a boy, three-sided, three-and-a-half walled structure is what this is called, right? One, the red wall in the back is two in our case, three and then a half wall so three and a half walls he can go in and all the way to the side stay out of the rain stay out of the wind stay out of the sun three and a half walled structure super simple fencing very easy we did all that fencing for that boy in one day a gate we found it used craigslist or something like that a while ago more of that red wire top fencing huge zip ties they can be found in the electrical section at pretty much any hardware store, major big box hardware stores. And then these guys are set up the same way. See, look at them, scritchy, scritchy, scr oh, fine. Scritchy, 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 he don't wanna be scritchy. Same concept, but we ended up putting a gap in between, which we highly recommend when they're intact. If they were not intact, if they were weathered boys, like you saw over in House of Pie, way over there, way over there, which is where we started fixing the fence, they're weathered, they can all live together. I mean, they kept biting my phone and they don't like me in there with them. I mean, they do like me in there, that's why they kept attacking me. They can live together, but when they're not weathered and they're intact, they should stay separate. Again, this is not a how-to, this is a how we do things. That's all it is. We're not telling you how to do it, we're just telling you how we do it. Gotta get their buckets back from breakfast. But that's it, that's our fencing. Oh, one thing we really do like, if you can afford it, grab the that style gate they're the best they have they're very little squares again that four by two square but they're nice they're already gated up they have that metal i like these better than all these ones someday maybe we'll replace all of these it'd be four of them but that's a lot of money and as of right now no reason but they are breaking these look they get old they get rusted they get nasty he's starting to break his fencing yeah huh buddy yeah for the babies when the babies are born in that march april time frame and they start going out for the first time we ended up putting hardware cloth right here right 
to stop any babies from making their way out of these big holes. And we did it from the gate. So now the baby can't get through there because that's already little. So from that post all the way back to the barn and we did the same on the other side for a little bit. And then we run these things, which we call FEMA trailers. I know, it's kind of funny, you know, government trailer that they help you out when you need a place to live. That's what we use these for. We set these up during kidding season to have the babies. We set them up in here and make it so the babies can go outside without roaming the whole paddock and squeezing through the fencing. So if you're breeding and having baby goats, you might want to go a little smaller on the fence wire in the front section or in your whole thing. But you don't want hooves getting caught. You don't want horns getting caught if your goats have horns. That's why the bigger, I like the bigger fencing. Now they do make a sheep goat panel, I want to say. It's like the panels we talked about over these. It's 16 feet in length, but the squares are like super tiny squares. The challenge is they're like $80 a sheet or $60. They're super expensive. Really, really expensive. We've never bought them. We've never used them for anything. One more feeder here. Let's get that out. That's it. That's my fence video. Someday, eventually, if I can get mom with me, we will do a wood barn versus metal barn video. I know somebody requested it. I just haven't gotten, I got a lot to say in that video, I think. I just haven't gotten to it, but we'll talk about this metal barn and the challenges and the good things, the bad things. And then we'll talk about the wood barn, same thing, the good and the bad, and we'll compare and contrast the two. That'll come hopefully soon. I'll try to get mom on that project with me. So definitely subscribe and follow. Hopefully piggies are happy. Look at piggies. Yep, good. Stella's still over here watching chickens. Stella, what are you doing? Nothing. She's not doing anything. All right, that's it. Time to go. See you later. Bye.